Hello there and happy Wednesday everyone. Welcome to our live stream cooking show and Facebook Live. This is a Minneapolis Farmers Market live cooking demo in partnership with the Bonicelli Cooking Club and I am Chef Laura Bonicelli of the Bonicelli Cooking Club and I am also the Minneapolis Farmers Market Chef. We have been live streaming cooking all season. Tonight we are making acorn squash spinach spinach quiche which is baked right in the acorn squash shell and I'm always looking for creative ways to present a favorite dish and I love spinach spinach quiche I can't say it but I do love it and the natural bowl shape of the acorn squash makes perfect a perfect little quiche crust and it is gluten free and I didn't put any squash in the quiche filling um, because it's baked in the quiche or baked to the quiche is baked in the squash so you'll get enough of that when you eat the whole bowl. Um, the spinach goes in raw which I love it keeps the prep really simple and it cooks into the filling just beautifully. So in my research I did find several recipes that did not pre-cook the squash and I did try that and it almost works but I find it kind of risky because I like my squash for sure fully cooked and it doesn't get there in time sometimes um, in the time it takes to cook the egg filling correctly. Make sure you let the eggs puff up entirely before you take the quiche out of the oven and I'm going to show you that in a minute. That will ensure that they are fully cooked thoroughly. And finally my favorite part of this dish I have to mention is the shallots. They are so crisp and brown and so delicious. So we'll get this together. We are working with one squash and let me grab that. So what I did was I basically cut the recipe in half so I could show you two squashes done which I'm going to do right now and then we'll be filling these and baking them. So hang on a second. There we go. Okay so this is what they look like done aren't they beautiful and you can see that the filling is nice and puffed up I did tent this with a little bit of foil um, in the last 10 minutes or so just to make sure that the shallots didn't brown too much and I've got a fork right here and you can see how done that squash is just perfectly so 20 minutes these guys have been baked 20 minutes so they're not completely baked through they're par baked though and that gets you where you need to go Okay, so let's set these aside. Okay, so my par baked shells, what I did was I cut my squash in half crosswise, and then I took a small slice off of the stem end. Not all the way through, I didn't want to have a hole here, so just the very, very bottom and the same thing on the bottom end like that. So this makes a bowl that sits nice and flat. Then I sprayed these with um, canola spray, canola cooking spray, this stuff right here, and a little salt and pepper. And I put them in a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes and they come out just like this. So let me set those aside while we make the filling. First thing we're going to do though is deal with our shallots. So I have here a nice shallot that I've already peeled. And I'm just going to, I'm leaving it whole by the way too. I want the rings, so that's what I'm going for. Nice thin slices like that. I think they look really pretty in the rings, which is why I'm doing it this way to the best of my ability. Let's get that off of there. Okay. This is a strong sal shallot. It must be a very strong onion shallot year because <laughs> every time I cut one of these up, wow. Okay, and then I'm going to heat um, over medium heat. Get that going. There we go. Two teaspoons. And this is probably a little about a teaspoon, a little bit more. And again, I'm halving this recipe. So the recipe that you can download on the website has two shallots. 
we're doing one because I'm just doing one squash because I pre-baked the other. Okay, so we're heating this over medium heat and then while that is heating up, you wanna make sure the pan heats up with the oil. That's important. You don't wanna just have these sitting in the oil while it's heating up. They will not sizzle properly. But I'm getting these little rings separated to the best of my ability. Again, really strong smelling shallots. And I can see that my oil over here is starting to shimmer. And I think my heat's a little high, so I'm gonna cut that down. And let's get these guys in. Now the purpose of this is not to really brown them. I just want to get them going. I want them coated with oil and I want them starting to cook. If I don't do this, let me just grab a, let me tell you. if I don't saute them a little bit before I put them on top of my squash, what happens is that they just don't brown evenly and they cook really oddly. So this ensures that they will cook really nicely and look great on top of your acorn squash quiche. That. In just a couple of minutes, two to three minutes, is all you need. This also gives you the opportunity to make sure that they're pretty well separated. But again, I'm not trying to brown them or anything like that. I'm just trying to get them par cooked. Okay. I'm going to call that good. We'll leave them in the pans while this cools down. We'll just let them go like that. All right, so the filling for the quiche. So again, the recipe calls for six eggs and I am making three. So you can see the recipe cuts in half really easily. If you only have two people, that's perfect. Being careful with my eggs to make sure I don't get any shell in here. Oftentimes I will do this separately, especially if I'm adding eggs into ingredients, I would crack them separately into a bowl. But this I can see I don't have any shell, so that's great. And I'm gonna add a tablespoon of milk. The recipe calls for two tablespoons because it's doubled. And this milk is just gonna help me, oops, there it is, help me um, just break these eggs up, thin the filling out just a little bit. You could use cream if you wanted to as well. I'm not trying to really work any air into these at all. I'm just trying to get them nice and incorporated so that they, the whites and yolks are combined. Great. Okay. Then into that, I'm going to stir. This is a generous quarter cup of, um, this is actually Gruyere. You can use Gruyere or Emmentaler. I think the recipe is Emmentaler. and just work that in like that. And then some kosher salt. I'm using a quarter teaspoon. Half a teaspoon for the recipe. And then I'm gonna just guess on the black pepper. We'll mix that up. Okay, that's as simple as it is. And all we have to do is get the spinach worked in. Let me get rid of these. And the spinach. Okay, so I'm using baby spinach. The recipe calls for a cup. We're going to use a half a cup. And what I like to do with this is usually baby spinach has these little, whoops, little stems. And I'm going to get rid of the stems. If I were um, cooking the spinach first, I still probably would do this, but, but I would be less concerned about it because the stems would be cooked. But because this is going in raw, I want to get rid of the stems so that when you're biting into your quiche, you're not getting any part of that, you know, kind of stem that's not cooked as well as the leaf. A little bit tougher. And I'm just stacking them as I'm, roughly stacking them as I'm going along. Can you see this all right, Mark? Yeah. Okay. 
I think this is a shockingly simple recipe for something that is so, um, such a cool presentation. I can tell it's a cool presentation because it got shared a lot today on the internet. So I think people like the way it looks. So this bowl is a half cup measure as well. So that's what we're looking to fill, but I am going to chop this up. So we're going to do what looks like more. Okay, let's see how that, how far that gets us. And then to do that, I'm just gonna cut these across that way and then just roughly chop them. And that's pretty much it. How simple is that? going to do a couple more. I really like the spinach in this and it cooks it cooks in nicely so it's you would think that it would you need to saute it ahead of time but you don't which is great. I've been sauteing spinach in quiche for years and when I tried this it was like oh I might rethink that this worked out really well. Okay again I'm going to just go across like that. Great, and that is it. Put that in there. Let's get rid of the stems. Okay, and then just work this in. Let's pick up any pieces that happen to escape me. Get those in the mix. Great. Okay, let's get my little shells here. Okay, and then I usually use a quarter cup or a third of a cup to just scoop these in. And what's interesting about this, so it's, it's in the normal recipe, you would have four shells, right? And six eggs. So each one of these takes roughly about an egg and a half. Works out pretty well. Of course, your squash are gonna vary in size, but now you can see why it's important to get these as level as you possibly can so that you can fill them up right to the top without them spilling over too much. This one's a little, turned a little bit, but they're really pretty even if they spill over. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's all good. But there, that worked out perfectly. Okay, then last but not least, we'll just grab a glove here so I can sprinkle these. Now you can see this is starting because this is just tilted a little bit to kind of go over the edge. I'm not concerned about that. It will bubble up and look really pretty. So don't have to worry about that. That pan is hot. Let me grab this with this. Okay. And I'm just going to take these and place them right on top. These shallots were medium sized shallots. So you'd need two for the full recipe. This works out just perfectly amount wise. Okay, my oven is still at 350 degrees. And then I'm gonna just take these and very carefully put them into that oven. <laughs> and um, they will go for roughly 50 minutes. Um, 50 to 60 minutes is what I say. And I, you already saw what they look like. I'll pull those back up here in a second, but let me put these in the oven first. Whoa. Okay, so here are my cooked ones, and you can see they deflated a little bit, but they're still beautiful. My shallots, uh, I did cover them. They're starting to brown really well. They're not burned. They're just 
deeply browned and they're going to be crunchy and delicious. Okay, let's get some questions. Uh, what's the difference between Emmentaler and Gruyere? What is the difference between Emmentaler and Gruyere? Okay, Emmentaler and Gruyere are very similar. They are both um, semi-firm cheeses. They are Swiss cheeses. They, uh, they, um, they're from different areas So um, in Switzerland. So Emmentaler is from German speaking, and it's also sometimes called Emmental. It's German speaking Switzerland, and um, it is a valley. So the Emmentaler Valley, that's where it's located. And Gruyere is from French speaking Switzerland, and that is actually a town called Gruyere. Um, as I said, very similar. They are both nutty in flavor. They are great melting cheeses. Um, Gruyere is, has a higher fat content and it's saltier, so it ha it's more flavorful. Um, it also is a little bit finer. It has less of the Swiss cheese holes. Some pieces that you buy have no holes, whereas um, Emmentaler tends to have not huge holes like a regular Swiss cheese, but it does have some holes in it. So that is the difference as far as, you know, th this today we were using um, Gruyere. Um, and I had did chase them side by side just this week and definitely had more salt and it's just a more flavorful Distinctive tasting cheese. However, Emmentaler tastes like Swiss. So so that's what I know about that uh, Is there an Italian version of Swiss cheese? Is there an Italian version of Swiss cheese? Not no, there is not there is um, there is an Italian speaking area of Switzerland Which we have been to which is um, just north of Italy, north of Milan, um, the town of Ligano is Italian speaking Switzerland and, and the people, I actually know some people that from there, um, had an Italian teacher from there and um, they consider themselves to be as Italian as they do Swiss. So, uh, but no cheese. I would say if I had to pick an Italian cheese that would react similarly, it could be, it would either be um, Fontina or you could use something like an, an Asiago, um, certainly Parmesan, I mean, it's a quiche, so you can kind of do whatever you want. You could use cheddar if you wanted to. But in terms of the similar cheeses, I, I'd say Fontina for an Italian cheese would be my closest one. How about you, what do you think? Do you agree with me? I do. Okay, cool. Um, could you use butternut squash uh, instead of the acorn? Well, okay, so if you want this kind of a presentation, and a, I don't have a butternut squash handy, but they have, you know, they're shaped differently, so they do have this kind of a bell end. So if you wanted to do it this way, you could, you know, and have this kind of a cup, you could use that bell end, but you would have the entire rest of the squash to do something else with, which is fine. And you would only get one per squash, one cup like this per squash. If I had to think of other squashes, there are baby, kind of baby pumpkins, round ones that, that you'll see at the markets that would work very well too. Or another, my, another choice could be um, uh, taking a, like a delicata squash and cutting that in half, which is a um, oblong kind of thing. Those have the seeds going throughout, so they would make a nice cup and a nice presentation as well. And they're really flavorful. So that might be a good second choice in terms of that. And butternut squash, I love, but just bear in mind that you would have to get four of them to do this full recipe. Or two if you cut it in half like I did today. Okay, well, I hope you try this recipe. It is a delight to make. And you can see it's super simple. I went really, really quickly. So um, make sure that you go to the links below in the comments. Um, one, to take the tour of the Bonicelli Cooking Club itself, but the other to order your CSA, and um, the deadline is coming up, and that is next Monday. So go to that link, order your CSA. That It's gonna be a great deal and a wonderful way to wrap up the season. Um, while you're on, on the Bonicelli Cooking Club uh, website, make sure that you get all your recipes. All of the recipes from the entire summer are on the website right now. So go there and grab those. Go to the Facebook forum. You're already on Facebook. So go to the Bonicelli Cooking Club forum and join that because we will be shifting our live streaming into the forum in October. And I want to thank the Minneapolis Farmers Market for being just plain great and hosting this and all that everyone does there is so amazing. We thank you so much. 
much. And to everyone watching, please keep cooking. Take care. Ciao. I'll see you tomorrow night, 5 p.m.